Honourable members, we will continue with the debate on His Excellency's the President's address, and I now call on the Honourable Simeone Rousseau. You have the floor, sir. Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Honourable Prime Minister, the Cabinet Ministers and Assistant Ministers, the Leader of Opposition, and Honourable Members of the House and people at the gallery. Mr. Speaker, sir, allow me to associate myself with all the Honourable Members of this House to thank His Excellency, the President of Fiji, for his speech from the throne marking the end of the first year and the beginning of the second year of this Parliament. Before I continue, Mr. Speaker, sir, I may I I may as well wish and thank the people of Kandawa, especially the village of Lomati, Tawawa, Nambukilewira, Galira, and the Tikino of Nambukilewu, who were badly traumatized and evacuated for weeks, and wish to recognize their bravery and survival against the earthquake which shook the whole island of Kandawa on Sunday, 20th of October. Disaster Management Department, please, your quickest response to guide and direct the tra traumatized victims. Kandawa hates your better than never attitude. Work on the climate change or climate chaos indicator. Kandavu Church in Suba and its church choir for achieving its 48 years. It's a good celebration this Saturday. Everybody's uh, welcome to the John Wesley Primary School this Saturday. Recognizing Mr. Speaker, sir, and respecting the presidency as a symbol of national unity, which is immune and above from politics and even sanction in this house except by way of motion. Mr. Speaker, sir, we, the opposition, take an exception on some of the issues raised in His Excellency's address, given our past experience and feel of the present geopolitical and socio-economic pulse of the nation. On the outset of my response on His Excellency's address, from the throne of His Excellency, if it was anything than a reassurance of this government wants to continue to move in the direction of dictatorship as is the legislation agenda, policies, programs, and intents of the government is spelled out in his speech. According to the Constitution, as the tradition, the President is perceived to be the head of state and is seen a symbol of national unity. It is not His Excellency's speech, but the government's agenda that is usually pronounced on the occasion of the opening of each session of Parliament. If that is so true about the matter, then I must add that the speech made today on the 12th of November, as was the one made last year, compromises the independence and significance of the presidency, symbolizing the unity of the nation. In a nutshell, before I dis dissect some important parts of the presidential address, which are very few anyway, it is, re it is reflective of the narcissistic attitude that this government has ashamedly adopted in recent times. Needless, it needs to be reminded that the Nocetian's love affair with his own image, shadow and reflection, was both a cause of celebration as well as termination of life when Nocetian's beauty faded away. That is what I see happening by passing, by each passing and more so confirmed by the results of the last general election. The area that almost everyone who has the interest of the nation at heart, wanted to hear on was the compliance by Fiji on its international commitments, particularly with regard to the following matters. Miserably failing to adhere to early warning signs and signals issued on the Fiji economy by the International Monetary Fund. Making a joke by defending instead of admitting its vulnerability of the blacklisting by the European Union unshamedly seeking to defend and counter the observations made by UNERP report and still wasting taxpayers' money by sending a large delegation to Geneva, Switzerland for that purpose. Not gathering the necessary courage, will to face up to the ultimatum issued by the International Labour Organization, which expires this month. Still no word to the pronouncement by His Excellency, the President on the negotiations of PIP PESA plus status on the implementation of the sustainable development goals or expression of any intent as how Fiji is going to comply when it's going to rectify the remainder of the United Nations conventions and treaties pertaining to basic human rights. The lack of mention and again absence 
of the courage and the will of government of the day on the above international commitments shows that we are slowly but gradually becoming an isolated state whose international structure is questionable insofar as our commitment to global, regional and local peace and development is concerned. That reflects very poorly on the already dismal record of this government. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have a mouthful to say and I seek the forbearance of this House for that matter. I note with appreciation the remark made by His Excellency, the President, on the 2013 Constitution, more so the Bill of Rights contained therein. However, Mr. Speaker, sir, the spirit of those rights enshrined in the Constitution are brutally wounded by a string of draconian decrees cemented by the same Constitution. In this respect, I am alluding to the freedom of association and right of employment eclipsed by a string of draconian legislation. This string of super decrees have crippled the voice of the workers, made the trade union movement powerless and boldened unscrupulous elites interests of Fiji and overseas to exploit and enslave our workers as and when they wish. Mr. Speaker, sir, in Fiji's own context, what would those ILO standards mean? Let me summarize as follows. Decent and meaningful employment, respect and recognition of worker rights, the right to collective bargaining and respect for trade unions, right to freedom of expression and workers' trade unions, autonomous power of trade unions to reorganize and conduct their own elections, immediately stop all surveillance, acts of intimidation, threatening and harassment of all trade union members, and collective union initiative, and activities either by security forces, intelligence bureau, personal or undercover agents, right to strike, having exhausted all avenues of negotiations, a consultative re review of the civil service reforms, trade union executives shall enjoy the right to have a political affiliation, take steps to ensure, maintain and enhance the independence of the employment tribunal and empower the tribunal with adequate service and supplies to work its, to conduct its work. Amend and, when necessary, repeal the various draconian legislation that hinders or criminalizes trade unions' activities while, work, while allowing workers and trade unions with immediate effect to reassemble and march in the streets. This sounds impressive as it is to those who respect the rule of law, human rights, good governance, and democracy, but to those who have developed a trade of governing by the use of excessive authority that appears to be a case for nightmare. It is a nightmare for them because they have not been able to transform themselves. They have failed to adapt themselves to a free, just and democratic culture. That brings to me to conclude on labor relations, Mr. Speaker, so that these excesses by the Banimarama leadership and the Fiji government, Fiji First Government now justifies and bring out in the open the reasons for over-regulating and overtaxing the lives of the Fijian people. They are not treating people like human beings, but machines, that this has worsened the situation further, forcing our people to live and work as slaves in their homeland. The intent is to keep enough people criminalized and living in Fiji to continue to fund for their self-enrichment and political extravaganza. On equal citizenry, Mr. Speaker, sir, this government has been blowing its trumpet on the notion of equal citizenry because, as they say, it was introduced to Fiji for the first time ever by the 2013 Constitution. Since then, the Fiji First Government has continuously used this as its rally cry, exploiting the maxim that we are all Fijians, which, including to them, is something they introduced. Sir, two days ago in this parliament, during the Prime Minister's address, it was clear that they hang all the achievements on this. We are all Fijians with equal citizenry for the first time in our history. What does it mean? Once and for all, we should at least consider that equal citizenry. Means if we were to decipher why the government continues to shout this from the rooftops of every opportunity, to begin with equal citizenry. As they say, it is not a privilege, but a right. Why? At the time of the French Revolution, equal citizenry, citizenship was premised 
under assumes the assumption that all human beings are inherently equal. It was prominent in the struggle against the feudal hierarchy and the push to overcome relegations as a king's subject. Accordingly, equal citizenship was designed and achieved and promote two kinds of equality, equality on opposed to feudal status and equality in terms of citizens' rights to self-government as opposed to the subject's duty to submit to the will of the monarch. Thus, equality of status and equality in the right to self-government provide a baseline for and minimum concrete content to equal citizenship. The point to note is that it is safe to assume the original meaning of equal citizenship from the French Revolution is also applicable in Fiji. It is equal of status. We are equal under law. The right to self-governing through elected representatives. Clearly, this has always been the meaning given to citizenship in previous constitution. However, what is new that all citizens will now become known as Fijians. However, that does make, however, does that make any difference? Different ethnic groups in Fiji that we are all Fijians. Does that mean that there are no ethnic differences? We continue to discontinue talk about ethnicity, but it is rather amusing to find ethnicity being mentioned in the preamble of our constitution. That skins the cat to the bone. On the fisheries sector, Mr. Speaker, I have a couple of points to make as Shadow Minister of Fisheries. Allow me to begin on a positive note in commanding and thanking all those that participated and ensured that the successful year of the FJ movement, fishing ban which is in line with Sustainable Development Goal 1, no poverty, and Sustainable Development Goal 7, partnership to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, sir, fish as a staple diet in Fiji and the Pacific is now endangered by the number of factors which I sum up as follows. Overharvesting of marine resources, damages caused on the marine food, chained by release of toxic weight and toxic materials, dumping of foreign articles and objects threatening marine life and local environment, seabed mining and damages and exploitation of fishing areas caused during exploration on the seabed and beneath seabed minerals. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to acknowledge that the survival and development of Fiji as a tropical and small island state is dependent heavily on the rich to reef agrobiodiversity bequeathed by our creator and sustained by successful generations through the traditional knowledge and wisdom as much as they as their compassion for nature and for future generation. Thirdly, Mr. Speaker, the opposition is further aggrieved at the grant of foreshore leases, or what is being referred to as wet leases. I think we should be kidding ourselves if we are not honest enough to look around as we tour the country on numerous examples of how the grant of these wet leases have damaged our environment and affecting the marine areas and threatening marine life. These are two fundamental points that I wish to raise in this regard are the respect, recognition, and enhancement of rights of the resources owners, as, as was intent of the Goli Goli Bill and now compromised by the removal of the entrenched legislation on the previous constitution. The graduate pro prospect of environmental exploitation and avenue for the loot of environment resources, marine resources, which is and may be caused under the guise of research and explorations or economic development and investment. That makes sanitization by the relevant authorities and implementation of various laws and regulations important to an act and measure of enforcement rather than just lip service by way of rosy speeches in the House. Mr. Speaker, sir, with that sought and sustained response, I hope the message from this side of the House is clear to the government side which needs to do, which is not doing to protect our marine areas and marine life, compromising sustainable, sustainable development goal one, no poverty. Mr. Speaker, sir, I intend to speak on the cover industry, given the importance of the industry to my province of Kandawa and several other provinces of Fiji. The first issue that I wish 
to rise in this debate is that the proposed cover council in the cover industry bill, which I see as a duplication of the role as well as the powers and the functions of the cover dealers association. The question is in that regard are whether the proposed council will replace the association, whether it is designed to weaken the association to play a totally new role altogether than what the association is doing right now. My understanding, Mr. Speaker, sir, from that recent past experience of this government has been change of names of institutions and structures which does not make such a difference to what the status of the industry is. If that is the same ploy the government is seeking to deploy the cover industry, then I must say without hesitation that it is ridiculous and deplored by all the stakeholders in the cover industry. Secondly, sir, let me question the rationale and wisdom behind the move to regulate the cover industry. Is this move to empower the cover growers and dealers, or is it another trap to extract the much-needed funds by way of taxes and levy to continue the fundraising for this cash trap dictatorship? Maybe. Thirdly, listen, as the indicators show that the GDP component of the cover industry is on the rise, which is a positive sign for the future of this agro-based industry. That being so, the opposition wishes to question the government what kind of assistance has been rendered to the cover growers and dealers to express the scope of activities, or what are the plans in place to do so in the near future. I am more than excited and pleased to note that the announcement of His Excellency the President about the planning and build-up towards the Fiji Golden Jubilee celebrations next year, expressing the hope that the government will be inclusive in its approach and planning for the events to enable every Fijian to have the ownership of the celebration. Whilst on public holidays, I'm extremely grateful to the past and present governments for having retained Diwali and Prophet Muhammad birthday as public holidays in Fiji. It is time that government, Ministry of Tokay, and the Assistant Minister of Tokay reinstate Radskuna Day instead of the Constitution Day, also consider national scale of celebrations on the occasion of annual Indigenous Day for the natives of Fiji and Rutuma, which is in line with the spirit of the date of session of both Fiji in 1874 and 1879. In inclusion, Mr. Speaker, the short address from the throne depicts few things. Firstly, playing double role, excelling in politics of diversion, using taxpayers' funds to extremely run propaganda to hot-wing the same taxpayers and continue to systematic implementation of cultural autonomy. Secondly, the, the promises made to the voters of this country to obtain and not to a handsome mandate last year by this government, and it was in, in 2014, remains unfulfilled and not reflected on the agenda spelled out in the speech by His Excellency the President. That is not only masquerading with the mandate of the people, but a sheer act of betrayal of the faith and trust of all those who voted this government into office. And thirdly, the government who lost the plot and is looking for answers for the exit strategy. It is caught up in the web of its condoms. That sums up the cause of widespread disenchantment and growing opposition to this government by each passing day. As the loyal opposition of the people of Fiji, we have sacred duty to our country and its people. We will not shy away from being voices and true, true representatives here in this House. Therefore, with these few words, Mr. Speaker, Sir, a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year's to all the honorable members and the families. Mr. Speaker, Sir, I have reservations. Until then, I cannot support the motion. Thank you. I thank the Honourable Simeone Rosova for his contribution to the debate on the President's address. I now give the floor to the Minister for Defence, National Security and Foreign Affairs, the Honourable Inia Seruiratu. You have the floor, sir.